Hello students, how are you? I hope all of you are well. Uh, lockdown is going on due to coronavirus. Um, schools are closed for a long time and uh, so that uh, don't worry I am always with you. Today I will try to help you by deconstructing a poem namely uh, the scene from chapter 6 um, class 8 English textbook. My dear students, have you ever seen the sea, any sea, the blue water of the sea, the white waves or the sandy shores? The sea is mighty as well as beautiful, isn't it? So, uh, the poem, the sea is written by James Reeves. Do you know anything about James Reeves? He was a British author. He was known for writing poetry, plays and contributions to children's literature. He was a critic as well as a broadcaster too. He wrote both for adults and children. So, he has made a technique to make his poem a unique one. What is that technique? He has made uncommon comparisons to show the vividness of the sea in the reader's mind. Can you compare the sea with any kind of animal? In this poem, the poet has compared the sea with a hungry dog. And this poem is basically based on metaphors. Do you know what is a metaphor? Metaphor is a figure of speech. Metaphor is a figure of speech and in this figure of speech two ob objects are compared in an indirect way. The, the, there is a point of similarity. For example, you are my sunshine. You are my sunshine. Here you the person and sunshine, these two objects are compared with each other. But what is the point of similarity? The point of similarity is the sun's warmth and happiness. As the sun gives warmth and happiness to someone's day, similarly you also provide warmth and happiness to someone. To find the similarity in this poem, the poet has used two objects. One is dog and the other is sea. These are the two objects. And the point of similarity is omnivorousness. As the dog is hungry dog. Hungry dog. So, it can eat anything it finds. And these two objects of nature, they are compared to each, compared with each other to draw the vividness of the sea. The poem uh, starts with the line the sea is a hungry dog giant and prey here the word a hungry dog it is both unpredictable and wildness of the dog is found here how when a dog is hungry then it 
does not know how to fulfill its hunger and at the same time it is wild it becomes wild why because it is uncontrollable out of hunger like the hungry dog the sea is also unpredictable and wild sea is powerful tidal waves of the sea are too much powerful and this power of this tidal waves cannot be predicted and they are too much wide so next comes giant and great here we find another figure of speech that is alliteration alliteration do you know what is alliteration alliteration is a kind of figure of speech that in which uh, the repetition of same speech sound is used to uh, make the rhythmical sense more stronger and the music also becomes more stronger so in this two words giant and great both these two words begin with g sound g giant and g great so here alliteration is used by the poet so giant and great the c is giant because it is huge in size and the tidal waves of the sea are very gray in color that is why it is called gray giant and gray uh, in the next line uh, of the poem we find that he rolls on the beach all day he here refers to the sea waves so he he that means sea waves here we find another figure of speech personification do you know my dear students what is called personification as i said earlier that it is a figure of speech and when inanimate objects are given the attributes of living beings then it is called personification so look at the line he rolls on the beach Uh, all day he hear the sea waves it is a natural element sea waves and it is not a living being but roll this very word is a um, um, uh, living attribute uh, this is a attribute of living being uh, it is imposed on the sea waves that is why he uh, that means sea waves are rolling on the beach as the dog is uh, rolling its body on the behind uh, we find here in this poem uh, with his clashing teeth and shaggy jaws hour upon hour he gnaws the rumbling tumbling stones and bones 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 so here clashing this word refers to the dog's teeth which are hitting against one another and shaggy this means long thick hair so both these two words clashing teeth and shaggy jaws this refer to a danger a danger and uh, the sea also becomes dangerous as well as the hungry dog so imagine how the dog looks like a dog which uh, has a mouth covering long thick hair uh, shaggy jaws so the dog has a big mouth with long thick hair and uh, it has big teeth uh, which are hitting against one another so the dog was that kind of dog which is very dangerous to anyone and the both the sea and the hungry dog 
uh, are equally dangerous. Look at the uh, structure of the line. First two line in the first two lines there are no punctuation marks uh, given. This kind of line is called run-on line. No punctuation mark for a long time. And in the third line, comma has been used. Rumbling, tumbling. This word, once again, notice this word. Rumbling, tumbling. It is another uh, figure of speech. Assonance called assonance. What is assonance? Resemblance of sound between syllables of nearby words. So, rumbling the nearby word, tumbling. And notice the sound of these two words. Ra, aru, ra, and t, u, ta. That is ra, ta. Rumbling, tumbling. That is why the same kind of similarity in the same kind of sound. So, it is called assonance. One uh, thing you should uh, know that this kind of sound is made with two or three stressed vowels, not by consonants. This kind of sound rises from two or three stressed vowels, not consonants. Here we find the vowel U, R and T, U once again. So rumbling, tumbling, this uh, assonance figure of speech has been used here. Nose, this word means chews. So the dog knows what bones. The dog with his teeth, clashing teeth and shaggy jaws, it chews the bones for a long time. Similarly, the sea also chews what? The stones which are rumbling and tumbling, which are making rumbling and tumbling sound. So, do you find the similarity between the activity of the sea and the hungry dog? Notice bones, bones, bones. This word has been used thrice in the poem. Why? It has a very, uh, signi uh, very important significance. First, uh, it is used for the uh, dog is very uh, urging for food because it is hungry for a long period of time. So, to intensify the dog's urge for food, this word bones has been used. Secondly, to show the importance of the situation, bones has been used. And thirdly, the tidal waves of the sea, they are also falling on the beach repeatedly. Okay? Next line, the giant sea dog moans, licking his greasy paws. So, uh, here the sea beach is compared with the dog's paws. Okay? So, the dog's paws, uh, it is uh, very uh, greasy. And uh, why the dog is leaking its paws because the dog is hungry and uh, hungry for a long time. It doesn't get any food for a long time. That is why out of hunger it leaks its paws. And just like the tidal waves of the sea lake uh, the sea beach. Okay? So, the sea beach, that is uh, how the sea beach is compared with the dog's paws. Now, the uh, word greasy. Why greasy? When any object is leaked, it becomes wet. And 
the beach is also wet due to tidal waves that is why uh, it is greasy so as the dog's paws becomes greasy out of its hunger it uh, licks it uh, its paws similarly the tidal waves also uh, lick the sea beach out of its hunger because earlier i have told you that sea is omnivorous and it does not get any food that is why it the uh, tidal waves of the sea lick the sea beach understood in the second stanza we find that the dog becomes wild and uh, why wild because it doesn't get any food for a long time it is uh, suffering from its hunger that is why the dog becomes wild and naturally it is uh, very uncontrollable no one can control this kind of hungry dog the second stanza starts with and when the night wind roars and the moon rocks in the stormy cloud he bounds to his feet and snaps and sniffs shaking his wet sides over the cliffs and howls and hollows long and loud so um in the second stanza the um, roaring dog is compared with uh, the wind at night in a stormy night um, the wind roars like the dog is roaring and uh, here the stormy cloud stormy cloud that means environment is disturbed by storm uh, the ambience or the environment is stormy the moon rocks the moon moves back and forth in a rhythmic order so as the environment is violent and it is disturbed by the storm similarly the dog is also uh, violent and is disturbed by uh, its hunger now dear students look at the line he uh, bounds to his feet snaps and sniffs this two words snaps and sniffs snaps meaning breathes in and sniffs smells so these two words it is uh, they are used only for the sake of rhythm but they imply the dog's symptoms uh, 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 what are the symptoms restless sorry restless and hungry so the dog breathes in and smells it is very restless and hungry similarly the dog like the dog uh, as it is violent and uh, in a very dangerous condition the sea also the tidal waves of the sea they are also becoming very violent and dangerous uh, at a stormy night now the next line shaking his wet sides over the cliffs so the dog as the dog shakes its body wet body uh, when it shakes its body then the water sprinkles all over in a surrounding area uh similarly the sea waves the tidal waves of the sea they are also shaking their uh, water over the cliffs over the portions of the cliffs so that it uh, the droplets of water are sprinkled over howls and hollows long and loud once again uh, the figure of speech alliteration has been used by the poet because look at the sound howls h hollows h and the another part long l and loud 
a so um, these um, consonants uh, are repeatedly used howls and hollows and long and loud thus alliteration has been used here i have already explained what is alliteration uh, in my earlier uh, lecture what does this word howl uh, mean it means a loud sound and hollow uh, this also uh, means long loud noise so uh, in time of uh, running the tidal waves we uh, can hear these kind of sounds howls hollows and this kind of sounds last for a long time loudly so that is why howls and hollows long and uh, loud uh, during the night the storm uh, in the storm the tidal waves are very um, uh, loudly sounded and uh, the sound continues for a long time that is why howls and hollows long and loud for today hope you guys like it and stay tuned for more videos subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon and also don't forget to like share and comment down below bye